Hey everybody, welcome to the Rust tutorial. Welcome back to Binary Adventure. I know it's been a long time since I posted a video, but I'm going to be posting some more videos up again. Um, one of the things I've been doing is learning the Rust programming language. And as you know, coming from a security background, um, as noted by the, the subject of other tutorials on the channel, um, specifically from a native standpoint, from C, C++, uh, assembly language and binary stuff, I fully understand the amazingness of the Rust programming language. And I would like to introduce it to you if you don't know about it, or if you've never used it. And I'm going to try to keep this as concise as possible. But essentially what separates Rust from other programming languages that are new is that it is a compiled language like C or C++. It compiles down to, to machine code. So it does create binaries. It's not interpreted. It's, you're not scripting. But the difference is that it enforces all memory safety rules at compile time pretty much no matter what. And um, I'm going to put an asterisk after that and say that that's only the case if you're using what's called safe Rust. So, so Rust allows you to place code in you know these unsafe blocks like some other languages do. And if you do that, you're essentially on your own. There's no more guarantee of memory safety. But if you stick to regular Rust proper, which you can for most of the time, then you're guaranteed to have no use after freeze. You're guaranteed to have no memory leaks. You're guaranteed for it to be much harder to have anything like a buffer overflow. You're guaranteed to automatically close all handles. You're guaranteed to not have ridiculous thread synchronization issues that would cause memory corruption. You're guaranteed to not have uh, standard memory corruption at all, um, even in single threaded code. It solves like 90% of the memory corruption and memory errors that are often exploited by attackers, malicious actors, researchers, etc. Okay. So Rust is is pretty state of the art. Now, that doesn't come for free. One of the things about the Rust programming language is it's a lot more verbose in some ways and it's very difficult to learn at first. The learning curve is very steep and that's the reason why I'm going to be making these videos uh, specifically focusing on the hard parts of Rust, uh, specifically about the hard parts of Rust for people who are already programmers. Um, this is not going to be a newbie series for people who are new to code. In fact, I'm not even going to like go through the whole Rust book and just like talk about all the different subjects and all that kind of stuff. Because that's what the Rust book is for, which you can find online. But what I am going to do is address the key areas that most beginners struggle with and really spend some time on those and really spend some time clearing up like the 20 common errors that you're going to get from the Rust compiler and exactly what to do to solve those errors. Um, so anyway, back to Rust as a language though real quick. So... It does compile the machine code, as I stated before, and because of this, the runtime performance is extremely fast. Now, the amazing thing about Rust, too, is because it enforces all of those uh, you know, memory safety checks at compile time, that means there is no runtime. So there's no, um, it doesn't run in a virtual machine, there's no garbage collector, so all of that overhead is gone. Okay, so Rust creates assembly code that is basically, or, or machine code, which is basically as fast as C. Um, sometimes it's faster than the than the code produced by the C compiler. Sometimes it's a little bit slower, but it's, it's generally pretty comparable to C code. And that's what's so amazing about Rust, is it's a systems level language with much higher level syntax for the most part. Um, you can do like four in statements you can do these cool things called match statements which are in my opinion sort of an improved switch case statement and there's a lot of other higher level constructs and libraries that are available so that you feel sort of like you're working in python in in many ways it's, you know sans the memory having to deal with the memory and make no mistake 
having to deal with the memory constructs and rust is is very difficult at first and it will you'll spend a lot of time fighting with the compiler okay it's pretty much inevitable however you're going to save a bunch of time in gdb and you're going to save a bunch of time in a debugger and having to read through logs and things like that because once the rust program actually builds you're guaranteed that you're not going to have to chase around the same type of memory errors that you would in C and C++. So that's my introduction to Rust. And I, I just had this page up because I wanted you to see some of it from the official source. It says, Safe Rust is the true Rust programming language. If all you do is write Safe Rust, you will never have to worry about type safety or memory safety. You will never endure a dangling pointer, a use after free, or any other kind of undefined behavior. And then there's a paper... Um, it's called The Challenge of Using C in Safety Critical Applications. It was published in 2018 here. And it also, it's not necessarily a Rust paper, but it, it talks about the problems of the C programming language. And then it actually suggests Rust as a solution because it, it prevents. So what most people are doing nowadays is they're programming in C or C++. And then they're having to try to follow all these really strict guidelines manually about like, don't use these constructs or don't use those constructs or, you know, make sure you close all your handles and you free up all your memory and this and that. But, you know, people are always going to make mistakes because we're humans. And um, so what we're doing now is we're purchasing these static analysis tools for a whole lot of money, trying to find all of the mistakes that we can. And the static analysis tools are not perfect, so they don't catch all the mistakes. And like this paper is basically just saying, why don't we just avoid all those mistakes by using a programming language where those are not possible? And so it suggests Rust and um, it covers specific areas here where Rust really excels, which is um, where, where C usually falls short, which is having uh, multiple mutable aliases, modification of immutable data, ambiguous pattern matching, and data races. So those are four major uh, you know, security and memory vulnerabilities that are available in C that are not in safe Rust. Okay, so that's my little introduction video to Rust, and stay tuned for the actual Rust tutorials coming up here very soon. Thank you.